Hey guys, poor man's passport guide here, back on the scene after leaving USA four months ago for Southeast Asia. Now I wanted to get in my top five dating challenges as an old black American in the Philippines. When I left the USA, my intent was to do the whole deal, Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, the Philippines, but then I got caught up, okay? My body and mind were not in sync. I thought I was gonna be ripping and running with my backpack through Asia, and then it hit me. I'm not 32, I'm 62. I was hanging out in Bangkok when I got feverish after only two days there. And it's not like I was putting my dick anywhere it didn't belong. I didn't even get close to that. Then my test came back positive. I caught the C-19 and it stopped me in my tracks and gave me time to pause and think, what the am I doing? Okay, I'll say it. What the am I doing? My condition reminded me of some of the greatest challenges, like when I was homeless in America. I knew I didn't want to be homeless in Asia too. I needed a home base. So I flew back to the Philippines for about 4,500 pesos and found a home in Quezon City. After my quarantine and recovery, I went back to my goal of food, fun, and adventure, but something had changed. My American, let's go, let's fight, let's win. Run, boy, run. Race against the clock melted away in the steamy tropical paradise climate. My pace was less frantic day after day and more relaxed. And I'm not just here for the weekend, I'm just here chilling. So first off, one thing I noticed being here in the Philippines, hierarchy's a little different, because in the USA, I'm classified as a Negro on my birth certificate. But here in the Philippines, Negro means black skin. And the locals tell me I'm not black. You ain't black. Here in the Philippines, people classify you by melanin and how dark you are. So being a light-skinned Negro, I just, I'm just not black here. So these are my five challenges as an old guy from the West trying to date a Filipina and make it all make sense. Number one, the language barrier. One of my biggest hurdles that I've encountered is the language barrier. Yes, Filipinos can speak English and much better than I can speak Tagalog. So you're gonna have misunderstandings and misinterpretations right off the bat. And you're gonna end up frustrated and confused, but you're in a tropical paradise for gosh sake. Filipinos don't need to speak English to each other. And there are over 150 different dialects and languages going on. So I'm starting to catch on to Filipinos speaking Filipino English. And I just take deep breaths and become more patient than I've ever been. And one of my favorite dates, she was completely deaf, but that's another story for another time. Challenge number two, the cultural differences. Understanding and respecting these cultural nuances can be a challenge for an American unfamiliar with the Filipino way of life. Because I've been with a few Filipinas and uh, they're gonna wanna check on you 20 times a day. And given my situation, I am not ready to become somebody's property. Not now, not ever, forever and ever in a day. Cheating is worse than any other offense. Girls I've dated a few times or dated one time worry about me cheating on them. Challenge number three, family involvement. Family has supreme importance in Filipino culture and it plays a significant role in relationships. The involvement of extended family members in decision making and the expectation of meeting the parents early on can be overwhelming for an American. We're used to a more individualistic kind of dating. Uh, I had a date on the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, and we didn't even make it to the other side before the date was over. And I was never gonna meet the parents or the cousins or the nephews or the goldfish. It was a done deal, so. Challenge number four, the social expectations. Now, the Filipino dating scene can be challenging, but I don't think anyone could be as challenged as where I come from. Here in the Philippines, balancing personal desires with societal expectations can lead to emotional conflicts and feelings of pressure. I come from the gynocracy of the United States. All of my experiences, except 
for a few were with angry, bossy, bad-tempered women who didn't want to be wives or girlfriends. They wanted to be partners. I'm kind of old here, but partner is something I heard in Western movies where they'd be like, hey, partner, why don't you give that horse some water? He looks thirsty. The women I knew, they didn't want to be wives and barely wanted to be girlfriends. They wanted to be partners. And they were violent, masculine, and there was too many occasions where they threatened to kill me when they couldn't get their way. And I had too many nights where I wasn't sure if I was going to wake up. A little too much pressure for me. Anyway, now I'm here in the Philippines, a little battle scarred, but I'm single and ready to mingle, as they say here. As a foreigner, I've learned you want to be clear about what your intentions are. I love dating and companionship, but I'm past the whole love and marriage thing. And uh, goes together like a horse and carriage. Okay, I'm not ready to marry my nurse to save money on healthcare. As a crickety crankety old man who's in full monk mode, I enjoy my space and spending time alone after years of crappy relationships over there in America, but I'm definitely open, definitely open. I want some companionship, want somebody to hang out with, and who knows, maybe even fall in love. And I think you have to do your best to define your own terms because in my culture, we have been socialized, the men have been socialized to accept a woman no matter how foul, violent, and ridiculous she could be. It has been uh, really eye-opening to come to the Philippines, to come to Asia, basically to leave the USA and see that you can have a whole nother kind of life with people who are not uh, conditioned in the same way. So far, so good, not looking for any miracles, but as far as sharing your life with someone else, having a, a relationship, having a woman that is supportive of you and you can be supportive of her, well, this place might be a Shangri-La type situation. I'm an older guy in my retirement years and I want my piece of happiness, my piece of pleasure, and to find a woman here where we can enjoy each other and just live a simple life, which is all I've ever wanted. Back over there in America, things are so complicated now. Even younger guys I talk to are trying to get out of there. So I understand your pain and it doesn't have to be like that. Challenge number five, my final challenge is the financial differences. It's been pay to play my whole life. I've had more than one woman in the gynocracy tell me what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine. And that's the way it is in America. Now, I'm cool with something for something and I will gladly share if I can get what I need as well. Now, I gotta admit, when I got here, I was hella thirsty. Okay, six months before I got here, I was hella thirsty. And when I got here, I didn't understand the difference between a dollar and peso economy and I was spending money like it was going out of style. And I'm the poor man, so we're talking about spending a little money, which is a lot for me. I watched a lot of videos trying to get a grasp on what was going on financially to see if I could last, and I found YouTuber Sunshine Shoulders, who explains going from a dollar to peso economy and what the challenges will be with that. He gives a lot of clarity about coming to the Philippines as a Westerner and explains the differences of the economy you've grown up with and the economy that the Filipina has grown up with. Now, I'm coming from San Francisco, California, which is one of the most expensive places in the whole United States, and I was living bare bones. Going from San Francisco to the Philippines, well, I'm still living bare bones, but I had to learn because you get over here and you bring that thirst with you and you just want to show off and you want to be the big man around town, but you don't really know what the economy is here and what Filipinas are used to. So learn that first and foremost. Understand the economic disparities and the economic advantages that may come and the kind of support you'll be able to offer, which is going to improve your dating life and your 
love life tremendously. Remember, it's a trade-off. Something for something. That's everything I wanted to say, so poor man's passport guide, do me a favor, hit the like, share, and subscribe button. One of these days, I know I'm going to hit one of these algorithms, so help me out with that. And uh, I'll see you next time. Poor man's passport guide out.